You know, I was just, I went to the gym today. I went to Gold's Gym right over the hill. And I walked in there and I, I came, uh, we got off the plane. I said, we have to go quick to the hotel and have to get to the gym. Because you should work out. So we went in there and I went to the desk and I said, hey man. And I saw this book there and the book, uh, someone was reading it and it had fear as the label. And I said, dude, I used to live by that my whole life, bro. He goes, oh, wow. And he said the name of the book. I said, no, not that dude. I lived in fear. I was held bondage to it. But like that used to enslave me. Now I'm like a slave to right standing with God. It's totally different. It's amazing. He's like, oh, I said, dude, I said, and there was two guys behind the desk. I said, something's going on with your ankle. He goes, no, I'm good, man. But I tore my, my bicep tendon. Like he tore it like a few weeks ago. So he like can't extend his arm. I said, no way, serious, dude? Give me your elbow. So he gives me his elbow. I said, Jesus, thank you that you show him your love. God, thanks. And I said, what's going on? He goes, what's going on, man? Watch. He goes, I said, nothing. Just check it, man. Snap it out. Check it. Snap it. He's like, okay, you're freaking me out, man. I said, you know what, man? It's Jesus, bro. He lives in me. Remember that fear thing I told you about? I'm serious, dude. Like, fear fears this. I'm so serious. What if, because fear is a spirit. I told him, I said, dude, I said, it's a spirit of fear. It's fear. That's a spirit. I'm no longer a slave to the spirit of fear because I am a child of God. I've received the spirit of adoption. That spirit of fear thing is afraid of adoption. Oh, it's so good. It's about sonship. It's about the revelation of being a son. So I'm talking to this kid. And he's like, okay, dude. Hey, cool. All right. So we paid our thing and we went and worked out. So I'm just like having fun, working out, listening to the word in my ears because I keep the word in front of me every day, all day, all night, the word. I just have to. Why? Because it's life. It's amazing. I've listened to it thousand times, read it a thousand times, million times, doesn't matter. It just keeps getting better and better and better and better and better and better. And I can't afford to be deceived and taken away by anything. I can't afford to be taken away by any wind of doctrine that comes through. I can't afford to have anything be confusing to me. I can't afford to have the will of God be up for grabs and up for sale in my life when I am commanded by the Lord to know His will. I am actually commanded to not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of my mind so that I can prove God's will, approve what is and what is not God's will. I am an ambassador of Christ. I am an ambassador of reconciliation. I am a child of God. And if I'm a child of God and I know my Father and am known by my Father, then I know what is and what is not the will of God. Period. People say, well, that's not right. No, you just don't read your Bible. It is right. We are required to know His will because we know Him. Jesus was the walking manifestation of the will of God. Everywhere He went, it was only the Father's will. Every second of every day, He only came to do the will of Him who sent Him. And I'm supposed to be an imitator of God. I'm supposed to imitate God. How could we imitate God and not know His will? That'd be crazy. Right? I, it wouldn't be a good imitator if you didn't know His will. How could you imitate something that you don't know? I know that stretches people. It stretches me every day, man. Just diving into the truth. So this guy comes up to me, and I'm, I'm working out, and he goes, hey, the guy at the front desk, he goes, dude, I'm like so freaked out right now. I go, why? He goes, cuz, like, I went over there and curled, and it's gone. I go, awesome, bro. He loves you, man. You're not even thinking about him, and he's thinking about you. How amazing is that? He's like... I just don't get it, dude. This is crazy. So I'm sharing the gospel. It's kind of like show and tell. Now it's show and telling him. You got to tell him after you show it. You demonstrate and explain it. And so he's like, I just like, what's the deal? I'm like, the deal is Jesus. You grew up Catholic, right? Yeah. Whoa, dude. What's up with this? What are you, some kind of psychic? No, I'm a son. What does that mean? Like, I'm a son of God. He's my father. 
And I told him, you know, about Mary and how, like, she gave birth to Jesus and nobody got Mary pregnant and how that would be crazy, like, to be a woman and never get pregnant, like, by a man, but get pregnant by God. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just sharing my heart with him, and he's like, this is so crazy, dude. Nuts, man. Okay. He walks away. He's totally overwhelmed. It's pretty cool. And he talks to my friend Rick that's at the gym with me, too. And he's like, yeah, man, it's just Jesus. It was cool. And so I walk over and I see another girl that's like working out. She's really strong. And I, I just had a word about her shoulder. So I said, hey, you got some stuff going on with your shoulder. What's up? She goes, I don't know, man. I blanked it up and blankety blank, blank, blank. <laughs> I'm like so serious. I said, can, I said, I know how you can get it fixed. She's like, okay. I said, can I pray for you? She goes, oh. I said, come on. What do you got to lose? She goes, okay, all right. So I pray for her. She goes, that's blank and weird, man. She walked away. <laughs> This is normal. Because I'm in love. I'm in love with God. I'm in love. Sin becomes tasteless when you're in love. Once you've tasted and seen that God is good, why would you want to take part in something that separates you from love? You just wouldn't. I promise. It's tasting and seeing. It's actually tasting and seeing that God is good. And when you see that he's a good, good father, and that's who he is, and then you're loved by him, and that's who you are, and that's really it, when that's it, all that stuff that used to call your name just ends. It becomes such a stranger's voice, the one that Jesus told you and commanded you not to follow. He said, my sheep will hear and obey my voice. And the stranger's they won't follow. Why would I want to follow a stranger's voice now that I can hear his? Now that I'm hooked up to the, to the living God. He's not like, he's not a God that's, that's dumb. He's like, there's so many different gods in this world that are just not alive. They're like Nebuchadnezzar statue, dude. All pretty, but nothing there. So this kid comes over and he goes, listen, man, I need to talk to you again, man, because, like, I'm totally freaked out, dude. I'm like, you want another answer? He goes, yeah. I said, listen. I said, okay, so that girl over there, God spoke to me about her shoulder. He goes, no, shut up, man. I go, go over and ask her. So he goes, hey, what happened to you? She goes, that guy right there? He goes, no, really? Oh, dude. Oh my God, I gotta go. I gotta go. Why? It's the fear of the Lord. It's the fear of the Lord. We need the fear of the Lord. We need the fear of God in our life. People tremble. The fear of God is there. I said to him, I said, dude, don't run away. Listen to me. I said, what are you running from? When you were a little boy, you believed in Jesus, and then the world took that away from you. The world never gave you Jesus. So how could the world take it away? Come on, man, it's time to come home. He said, oh. I said, look, that guy at the counter, I said, the other guy that's working with you, I said, he's the guy that had the bad ankle. You go and ask him after you pray with me. So he prayed with me and got born again. And he goes, I'm going to talk to that guy. So he walks up front to the guy at the counter, and he goes, hey, dude, do you got problems with your right ankle? The guy goes, yeah. He goes, no, no way. <laughs> so I went up front and talked to him and he goes, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. Puts his ankle right out. We prayed, Jesus heals him. He goes, no way, that guy's a Christian. There's another guy that works there that his, his mom goes here and he goes here. Like, it's, it's just like, he goes, yeah, dude. Life Center's my church, bro. And, and they're like, oh, cool. So I go, hey, what do you say we take an interview on Periscope? They're like, okay. So I sat there and we filmed like these guys talking about their encounter like. <laughs> See this evangelism thing? We've like, we've made it complicated. Do you know the Holy Spirit's the best evangelist that there is? Can I tell you another testimony? Yes. Am I okay? <laughs> I 
I love you guys. I went down to, uh, I did the, the Reinhardt Bunky uh, Crusade Rally for the American Crusade in Atlanta. And there was like a, a lot of youth there, a few thousand. It was amazing. But um, yeah, so I went out to, because you go to restaurants and you go eat. And so I went to one of my favorite places, Texas Roadhouse. And <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm doing uh, Periscope commercials for them. I am. Where their waiters are getting wrecked. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings, wrecked. Gold's Gym, wrecked. Publicly. They're like, yeah, I'm doing a commercial for Gold's Gym right now. And they're like, oh my God, Jesus, just oh my God. It's so good. Anyway. So I'm going into the restaurant and it's packed with people and we're going, we went up and put our name in and there was a lady that walked by me and she was a waitress. She walked out the door and I, I just heard in my heart go after her. So I walked out the door and I said, hey, I chased her down the sidewalk. I said, hey, I said, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to give her a hug and pray over her. So that's kind of weird, like in the natural. So I went up to her and I said, hey, she turned around, she has tears flowing down her face. So I'm like, okay. I said, you know, I said, I love Jesus with all my heart. Can I please hug you and pray for you? She goes, okay. And I'm just praying over her and I have my hands on her head and just praying over her and she's kind of leaning on my shoulder. And God, I thank you for her. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says that she has dreams of being a child psychologist, but she can't afford college. So I just shared that with her. I don't think that's what she's dealing with right now. But that's a good word for her, you know? And she goes, what? Oh my God! And she, she literally, and I'm not kidding, she ran away like this. And I said, stop, stop. I said, I'm a Christian. She goes, no, you're not, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm a Christian. I said, God loves you. Listen, he did not turn his back on you. She said, yes, he did, and screamed at me. What do you do with that? Because I'm a Christian representing the God that turned his back on her. You better be hearing from your father. And God speaks to me and said that her mom died from cancer. She's blamed me and thinks I took her. I said, God did not kill your mom with cancer. She goes, oh my God! And I'm not kidding, like rage and screaming. I mean, Aah! I said, stop, stop. She goes, you're crazy, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not crazy. I'm gonna call somebody that's in the restaurant. And I'm gonna tell you what just happened at the hotel before I came here. And then they're gonna come tell you the same thing and, or, and you'll know that I'm not nuts. So, we just had a major encounter in the hotel hallway before we walked out the door to go to the restaurant. Why? Because that's what a lifestyle of Christ is. It's not looking, it's not looking to pray for somebody so I have a testimony to share. It's living a life with Jesus so I can share Him. So at the hotel room, I said to her, I said, this is what happened. I said, we were getting on the elevator to come here right now, to come to the restaurant. And I said, there was two people that were standing outside or there was a lady in the hallway standing outside the hotel room or the elevator getting ice. I said, hey. I said to her, I said, you have, there's feathers coming down. Yay. I said, you, I said, your aunt's really sick. I said, and she needs prayer right now. She goes, who are you? I said, I'm a Christian. She goes, okay, me too. I go, oh, good. Can I pray for your aunt? She goes, yeah. She's really sick. I said, come on, let's pray. So we're praying for her aunt. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, God. I thank you for great grace on her aunt. I thank you that you'd heal her mental disorder right now. In Jesus' name. And here it was bipolar. She's really sick, afraid to come out of the house. And we prayed in the prayer of faith. Nails that thing. She goes, she's crying. She goes, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I said, there's a man that's in your life. I said, he has a, he has a real pain right now. Who is he? She said, it's my boyfriend. I said, okay. She goes, I said, where is he? She said, he's in the hotel room. I said, okay. I said, you need to go get him right now. I said, how about if I come down with you? She goes, no, 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 no. She goes, 
I have to go, I have to go get him dressed, she said. I go, all right. So it's nighttime, so they're hanging out. So she went down and, and got her boyfriend. He comes down the hallway, he's like all like, big guy. He goes, what's going on? I said, dude, I'm just gonna pray for your shoulder, that's all. He goes, okay. Like the girlfriend's like. So I laid my hands on his shoulder and just prayed for Jesus to touch him. Now he's in a situation that he shouldn't be in. But he hasn't surrendered to God. But she's a compromised Christian. She loves God but has nothing to give her boyfriend. Hear me on this. God's not mad at them. It's not about mad. God loves them. And if they see his love, everything changes. Are you with me? So I'm not bringing that to the table. I'm just talking to them. So I'm praying for him. So he's in a twisted place. She's in a twisted place too. They ought not be in the hotel room together. Are we okay with talking about this? Probably should be. It'd be it wouldn't be good to call that grace. So, so pray for him. He goes, what is going on? Oh my gosh, it's gone. Girlfriend goes, really? Seriously? She goes, yeah. I said, can I just pray for you, man? He goes, sure. So I put my hand on his chest. I said, Father, I just thank you. In Jesus' name, God, I thank you. God speaks to my heart and says, he lost his grandmother a few years ago. She was a God-fearing woman. He's blamed me for her death. I said, you, your grandma died. Oh, it brings me to tears because there's so many people that blame God for things he's never done. Your grandma died and you blame him for, kill, for God killing your grandma. He didn't kill it. God didn't come to steal, kill, and destroy. He came to give life. Your grandma, God didn't take her out. She's a God-fearing woman. She's with Jesus right now, bro. He's like crying, like losing it. Like looking at his girlfriend like maybe he told me, she told me. She's bawling, losing it. I said, bro, I said, look at me. I said, it's time to give your life back to the one that you took it back from. You kidding? He goes, you're right, man. Okay. I said, it's just easy, dude. Ready? Let's pray. So guy gives his life back. Holy Spirit, right there in the hallway. Really awesome. We're like, all right, man. And they're like, they're crying. And so we get in the elevator together. And I'm like, man. And they're both trembling because their life's not in the place it should be. She's trembling. She's waiting for me to like, she's waiting for the, <laughs> that's not about that. It's about, <laughs> boom, God thumps the heart, changes everything. So we're in, the, we're in the elevator and I go, you know what, man? I said, you shouldn't be afraid of marriage, bro. I said, you're not going to be like your parents. See, your parents didn't do well at this, so you think that you're going to be the same and why you've actually said this. It's just a piece of paper. He looks at me and he goes, Oh my God, bro. I go, now that you're a Christian, it'd be awesome. And the girl's losing it because she wants him to ask her. And I'm not prophesying their marriage. I'm just saying, probably be better. <laughs> right? So, so we're just having this conversation. It's like amazing. And we get off the elevator and the guy goes, dude, I, I love you, man. I go, I, I love you too, bro. Welcome to the kingdom. He's like, yeah. Wow. I said, your whole life just changed. He goes, yeah. I said, what are you going to do with it? He goes, right on. She goes, thank you. And they both sat in the lobby. So I tell this girl, and I said, now, the guy that's with me on this trip is inside that restaurant. I'm going to call him, and he's going to come out and tell you word for word what just happened. And I'm not going to say words so you don't think I'm a lunatic. She goes, call him. So I called him, he comes outside, William, he comes outside and he goes, I said, hey dude, tell her what happened at the hotel. She's, she's just a mess. He tells her, she goes, oh my God, oh my God. She looks at me, she goes, you're from the Lord. <laughs> she surrenders and gives her life to Jesus, right there, complete. I mean, I'm talking like, Ridiculous transformation. Crazy. She, she goes, I just thank you for stopping me. I didn't want to live. Oh my, God, oh my God. How many people are we walking by 
that don't want to live. How many people in here have thought they don't want to live? Come on. It's really important. It's just being compelled by love. The love of Christ compels me. That if one die, then all die. And those that live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one that gave himself for us. That's everybody. That's right before our famous, you're a new creation. Old things have passed away, all things become new. It's right there. So we go into the restaurant. I'm almost done. This is just a great testimony. Sorry. It never ends. Every day is one. I get to ride on a plane tomorrow to New Zealand, and so many people are going to get wrecked. It's unreal. I'm not kidding. There's nowhere for them to go. I'm so, I'm, I'm so serious, man. Uh, it's ridiculous. I've had so many encounters on planes. It's so amazing. I go through TSA. Like, I'm going through TSA out in, out in Seattle. Going through and I get searched all the time. Just, this is just recent. This is just a week ago. So I, I'm coming through. I go through the thing, you know. And, and, they, and uh, the guy's on the other side. Hold still. I said, dude, you're going to search me anyway, man. But all you're going to find is Jesus, bro. I tell him every time. So when I said that, the lady that's searching the bags out there going through the scanner, she goes, Todd White. <laughs> I'm not kidding. She does. She stops what she's doing. Security is still going. Shuts the belt down. Comes right over around TSA. Dude searching me. I said, dude, Jesus loves you so much, bro. He's like, all right. I said, I'm serious. The longer you search me, the more Jesus you're going to get. He's like, cool, man. All right. Good. So I walk over. That lady's there. Pray for me right now. TSA. I'm so, I'm, I'm like, it's really amazing. And I pray for the people searching my bag anyway. I do. While you're searching my bag, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way with them. God, I thank you that you love them so much. And get words of knowledge and prophesy over the people in front of you. By the time they're done your bag, they're a mess. That's normal. That's normal. That's normal. So I, so I go in and we're sitting at the table and Tom's with me, Tom Rotolo and, and William, a guy that is helping us with the ministry because we need a lot, we need help. So he's like there, like just helping and our waiter comes up and I said, hey bro, what's up? He's like, he's like, how you doing dude? You know, because I got the dreads and he's got a yin and yang sign on his arm and so we got something in common. We do. I am a son, and he doesn't know that he wants to be one. I have something that he needs. You have something that the world needs. And if you see the thing that you have, you'll give it to the world. And you'll shine in the midst of a perverse and corrupt generation. And you'll walk and live a life worthy of the call. And hell will tremble when you walk in a room. And you really won't be afraid. The devil will be afraid of you. It's his love. So I said, man, I said, God loves you. And he goes, thanks, bro. And uh, he went and got our drink waters. And he comes back and just sitting there talking to him and gives our meal. And we're just sharing stuff. We have to talk about some things that are coming up the next day. And I said, dude, he comes back and I go, you know what, man? God loves you so much. I don't think you're aware of that, bro. He's like, no, man, you know, I ain't for me. And I'm just like, you know, and he goes, you know, I, 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 I do believe there's a higher power. I love that when people say that. Because our God is the most high God. And the kingdom's not a matter of talk, but of power. 1 Corinthians 4.20. 4.20. Four twenty is time to get high in the world. But 4.20 in the kingdom... It's not a matter of talk, it's power. So he's like, yeah, dude. So I, oh, let me tell you about my higher power, bro. So I told him my testimony. He goes, oh my gosh, for real? He's leaning on the table. He goes, no way. 
dude, I just got out of rehab. I said, oh, man, you need my higher power, bro. <laughs> He's like, man, how do I get it? I said, give me your hand. So he gives me his hand. And I said, wait a minute, you hurt your wrist. He goes, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? Are you a psychic? I said, no, I'm a son. That's my dad. He's like, who's your father? I said, give me your wrist, man. So we pray for us. He's like, whoa, whoa, that's crazy, man. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit. Come on, there's more. Let me pray for you. So I pray for him. He goes, oh, my God. Dude, what is this? I said, it's him. He goes, I, I need whatever this is. I said, it's the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus, bro. Come on. You were younger. You believed. You walked away. Come on, man. He goes, yeah. He goes, what's going on right now? I said, bro, you, you need Jesus right now. Not religion. You need Jesus. You need a relationship with the Father. I shared my heart with him. He goes, okay, man. Okay. All right. What do I do? So we just pray. So we prayed. The Holy Spirit comes. He's like, oh my gosh. Dude, I, f I feel higher than I ever have felt. <laughs> and that's what he said. And I said, well, sit down. So he sits down. And he goes, what's going on right now? I said, it's him, man. He goes, wow. I like him. I said, I need you to do me a favor, man. I need you to call your mother right now. He goes, call my mom. I said, yeah, she's been praying for you for years, dude. He goes, she has, man. She really has. I said, call her right now, right this minute. Get your phone out. He goes, hey, mom, I'm, I'm at the table at work. Yeah, these couple guys came in and started sharing their father with me. He said, and I, I gave my life to Jesus, and I hear the mom on the phone. I said, give me the phone, dude. He gives me the phone. I said, hey, how are you today? She goes, who are you? I said, I'm a Christian. I said, I just ran into your son today. He just needed an encounter with the father. She goes, you have no idea. I said, oh, I do. I was a drug addict for 22 years. I said, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to get him to church in the morning. She's like, oh, okay. And I gave her the address. I was at Bethel, Atlanta. So, so, so she brought her son to the 11 o'clock service. And I saw him come in. And I go, oh. There's like, it was packed with people in this high school. And I said, come here, mom. So she goes, I said, yeah, come here. She comes up and I give her a big hug. And I'm just, God speaks to me that she's charged all of her stuff up with such debt for this young man. I said, hey guys, I said, I'll tell you the testimony afterwards. I said, but we need to take an offering for this lady right here. She goes, what? And, and this kid in the seat is, <laughs> he's, he's, he can't even hold, he's, he's losing it. And her friend, his friend is there too. They brought another girl there. So she's like, she's crying. These people came up and kept coming and hugging Tanner and his mom and they're losing it. They, they, like Tanner's never been, like he's never been encountered like this. This girl's never been in the church in her life. She's like, what's going on? This is crazy, God, oh God. She's sitting there. I said, come here, girl. I said, God has something for you. She comes up front and the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says she wants to be a veterinarian. I say, hey, you want to work with animals, don't you? She goes, uh -huh. I said, God wants to give you the desires of your heart, but first he wants to be in your heart. And shared the gospel with her. She just gives her life to Jesus. And mom and Tanner and this girl are losing it. They ended up taking up like a $7,700 offering for them. To pay back credit card debt that she charged up to put her son in a rehab that he left early. At that restaurant, God spoke to me about Tanner. He said tonight would have been his last night. And that was after he got born again. After Jesus came. After the Holy Spirit filled him. He's, God, he's, I'm sitting there beside him after I talk to his mom. God says to me, tonight would have been his last drug outing. Tonight would have been his last night. And I just lost it. What a privilege to be a friend of Jesus. What an amazing privilege to be a friend of God. You know, in, in Peter, in, in 3.15, I think it's 2 Peter, uh, 
maybe it's first. No, it's first. First Peter 3.15, it says, be ready to give an account for this hope that you carry. When people ask you, what is this that you got? What is this hope that you carry? What is going on in your life? Be ready to give an account. Be ready to talk about why you have this hope in you. So my question is, where's your hope? And what's your hope in? Is your hope just to like get to heaven? Or is your hope to bring heaven to earth? And if your hope is to bring heaven to earth, then don't think there's this huge process of getting to the place where you get to do that. It's the reality of knowing Him, and everybody can know Him. Everybody has the privilege of knowing Him. Everybody has the privilege of knowing the Father. He's such an amazing good dad. He's so beautiful, He's so lovely. He's above and beyond anything you could ask or think. He's, he's beyond words. He's indescribable, yet describable. He's, he's love itself, yet way beyond anything that we think love is. Like 1 Corinthians 13 is amazing, but he's way beyond that. And if we would taste and see that he is good, your whole life would be wrecked. Your whole life.